Hello and welcome to the channel. My name's Drew, this is Just a Guy Linux, and it has been a month since my last video. And again, you guys have showed up when I'm not even watching, and I'm nearly at 2,700 subscribers. I don't understand it, I am puzzled by it, but I'm appreciative. And um, thank you for your viewership and thank you for subscribing. So that last video a month ago uh, was about installing Thunderbird. The idea was to potentially replace a lot of the Google ecosystem. And in one kind of throwaway comment I said was, I don't know what I'm gonna do about Google Photos. I, something like that, it was, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. But that got a few comments uh, on this video and one of those comments uh, suggested image. Now I had thought about image. Now here's a like here's the demo uh, site for image, and it looks really good. So what I want to do today is install it. Now you have to use Docker in order to install it, unless uh, you guys know a different way to do this. But regardless, I don't have a problem installing Docker. I have only done it once or twice, but today I'm going to try it again. Let's go over to the requirements page and you're going to see that indeed Docker and Docker Compose is required software. Uh, you need to have preferred six, but at least four gigs of RAM and preferred four core and at least two. Uh, and what I wanted to do was to install this on a machine that I use in a different video, one that I installed Jellyfin on. Uh, I'm going to pull up the, the picture of that. Uh, because I wanted to show it is an Optiplex 3080. Now the problem with this machine in particular is it's got a 8 gig of RAM which is fine for this project uh, but it only has 128 gig of uh, disk space so in order for me to actually put photos on there I'm gonna need something extra so I have this little USB uh, drive it's got 128 gig now that's probably not going to get it done either, but for the purposes of this video, I think it's fine. So we're going to do use that those those that hardware, I should say. Okay. So before I get into the actual installation, I'm going to install uh, Debian from scratch as well. Uh, so I'm going to pause the video. We're not going to get into you know needing to install Docker, and we will install Docker via SSH. But for right now. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and hook up this, uh, this Optiplex 3080 for uh, installation of uh, the OS and maybe, maybe uh, a couple other things too. We're back on our Optiplex 3080 and we're going to do our uh, base install. So I'm going to go to Advanced Options and Expert Install. And I'm going to choose my language, which is English and in the United States. Tab over to continue. I'm going to go down an arrow and configure the keyboard and select American English. And I'm going to select detect and mount. And continue. Continue again. And I'm going to detect the network hardware and configure it. And I'm going to leave the uh, host name as Bellagio. And I'm going to remove the uh, domain name and hit continue. We can always change things later. So I'm going to hit uh, set up users and uh, passwords. And I am going to use the no option here and put my name in. And I'm only going to use a two character password in the event that we actually use this. For production, I'm going to obviously change the password to be a lot more 
random. And I'm going to configure the clock. And I am in the eastern part of the US. And I'm going to hit detect disks. And now I'm going to partition the disks. And I'm going to go over to manual. And I'm going to select this NVMe uh, 0 and 1 and hit uh, create empty partition using GPT. OK. Now, I'm going to arrow down to the free space and create a new partition. And that size is going to be 300 megabytes. And hit continue. And I'm going to put this at the beginning. And I'm going to use this as uh, EFI system partition and go done. Now, I am going to use the rest of the free space and create um, using all the rest of the disk. And I'm going to uh, use this as ButterFS journaling file system. And we are done. And we're going to finish and partition. Now, notice I didn't put in a um, I didn't put in a swap, and that's because I am going to use software swap and uh, using ZRAM later. So, do I want to go back because I didn't choose swap? And the answer is no. And I'm going to write those changes. And before I do install, so I'm glad if you had hit install too quickly, now you missed out. <laughs> Because what we need to do is go Control Alt F2, all right, and hit Enter, and let's DF uh, space dash H, and we're going to have to do some work here as far as um, uh, partitioning with ButterFS. So first things first, let's U mount um, the target boot EFI, and let's U mount. Um, target. And now let's go ahead and mount the um, dev and then NV. I'm always going to be very careful here as I am not particularly great at typing. So NVMe0N1P2 and we're going to uh, mount that to MNT. Now uh, we want to uh, CD into MNT. And let's ls, and you'll see that the uh, the default at root fs has been created as our sole subvolume, and I'm going to move that oops, move that's right uh, at root to the at, and there you go. Now we're going to create two more subvolumes, and so I'm going to say butter fs, and you only can you can just use two characters. So I'm going to say um, subvolume create at home. All right, and it did it for me. I didn't have to write type out the entire ButterFS subvolume create at home. I could just kind of like use a shortcut. And now I'm going to use the same cut shortcut and put in snapshots. And now when I hit ls, we've got three subvolumes. Great. And let's clear the screen. Now I'm going to type DF again just so that I can get, make sure that I have the correct spelling uh, for the NVMe. Also, I want to, um, I want to list the uh, subvolumes just so I can show you that the, uh, um, the two character uh, abbreviations work. And you'll see that uh, ButterFS subvolume list it can, be, uh, can be shortened. OK. Now I want to um, mount um, dash O, and we're going to read write no a time. Oh, let's put a space in there. That's no good. No a time, and I usually put space underscore cache here, but I don't think is necessary any longer with the uh, with the kernel. So I'm just going to put compress equals zstd, and I'm going to put colon one, and I'm going to use ssd discard equals async and the uh, subvol equals at and the uh, location is dev and then nvme01 
uh, sorry, zero, N1, P2, and then target. <laughs> I have to make sure I spelled that correctly. Okay, now let's, um, let's make a few directories. So I'm gonna go uh, make dir and then dash p and target boot efi. And then let's do up arrow here. I'm gonna also add target home and target dot snap shots. Okay, now let's go up arrow, what, one, two, three, four. There you go. And we're gonna add uh, home and then target slash home, enter. And then let's go up arrow one more time. And let's uh, remove home here and put snapshots. And let's go over and remove home and put dot snap shots. And there you go. Now, we need to remount um, the NVMe 0N1P1. So let's do that by saying dev NVMe 0N1P1 uh, to target boot EFI. All right, now let's uh, nano, and we need to go to target Etsy FS tab. And there you go, We're, we need to edit this for Debian. And let's remove the, um, the defaults from this, uh, the options, and let's uh, replicate what we did before. So it's uh, RW and no A time and uh, compress equals ZSTD colon one. S oh, SSD discard equals async and then subval equals just the at symbol. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit control K and control U one, two, three times. Okay, because we need one for home, which we will show here. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete those uh, spaces so that it lines up pretty. And I'm going to go down here and hit home. And let's go to the uh, let's go over here and say dot snapshots. And let's delete those characters and then go down to vol sub vol equals and then say snapshots. Okay. And we're going to control O, enter, control X. And we're good to go. So let's control Alt F1. And let's install this base system. All right. Well, that took some time. <laughs> you know, what's funny is I, you know, I look at uh, other people's the way they do their installs, and I'm a big believer. There's a couple people that I really respect, and one of them is the Linux Dabbler. And he, you know, I'm kind of added the, the snapshots and the dot snapshots because uh, watching one of his videos and, um, and, you know, it seems like a really smart idea. So I'm copying it. Okay. When I select this, by the way, I think what's going to happen is it actually needs to, um, I think we're at a different kernel now, so it might actually have to install a uh, newer kernel. Maybe it will do it later in the, in the install. Another thing I wish I could do is I wish I could just uh, fast forward some of these videos so that it wouldn't take so long. I could just stop it in production. Anyway, 
All right, we're going to configure. We're going to use a network mirror, HTTP, and we're going to be in the US. And I'm actually just going to pick this ftp.us.debian.org and hit continue. Um, I don't know. I mean, as far as being a server, you might be able to just go no, no, no here. I am just going to say yes. Um, and then I, I want to say no here, but I just am a little hesitant to do so. But I am going to say no here. And then I'm going to add back ports just in case. And I want to see if uh, if a new kernel. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I thought it might be. I thought there might be a newer kernel, newer kernel than um, what was on the uh, twelve dot one uh, net install. And no. And I am going to just uh, uh, spacebar over these selections, but I am going to add SSH server and hit continue. And install the group grub bootloader. Nope. Yes. And no again. And let's finish. And <clears throat> excuse me, hopefully we'll have a um I've had a little bit, this machine's been a little twitchy, and I hope I don't have to uh, ditch this entire video. But we shall see. And yes. And continue. All right. So I am going to remove the, um, the USB disk uh, install. And I'm going to hit OK there. And cool. All right, so let's log in. Now I am going to sudo uh, dpkg reconfigure uh, console hyphen setup. Now this is not something for you to do. This is something for me to uh, get larger font size for the video. And, and there you go. All right, so I do need a few things. I'm going to uh, sudo apt install. Um, micro and exa and zram tools and i want to make sure i have wget and curl um and i want to say neofetch but do i really need neofetch yeah let's let's yeah i'm just gonna get it you know what i'll get it later because this is a quicker install this way Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to sudo micro uh, Etsy uh, default and then ZRAM. So, because we need that ZRAM uh, swap, so I'm going just to uncomment two lines and that's it. Because I don't mind having uh, a four gig swap drive on this, on this uh, server, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to uncomment those two. So, control S for micro and control Q 
And that should do it for now. Let me think. Was there something else I need to do prior to? Um, I don't think so. All right. So I'm going to pause the video and then we're going to log in via SSH in a sec. All right, so I am going to SSH. This is my, you know, my normal uh, recording machine. And I'm going to go into SSH, Drew at, and the name of the uh, machine that we just uh, installed Debian on is Bellagio. And there you go. So I'm going to say yes. And I do know the password, so I'm going to go with that and there you have it we are logged into the Bellagio now while I'm at it I I pulled up my um, uh, my bash RC just so I can like throw it in there real quick and so I'm going to uh, micro and the bash RC and I'm gonna uh, control a here and I'm gonna go ahead and copy all this and hopefully I can hit uh, control shift V and paste anyway okay and there's a couple things I'm gonna comment out here too um, so I'm gonna comment this and this and I um, definitely don't need this and, and I'm gonna comment that Oop. Oh man, you're slow as heck, aren't you? And this, and I'm going to actually just put in uh, micro here, and control S and control Q, and now bash. Oh yeah, Neo fetch isn't there. All right, well let me just let me throw that in there real quick. Sorry guys, uh, throw apt Neo fetch. Oh, what did I say? Oh, sudo apt install. <laughs> And yes. And I'm going to go ahead and, while this is working, I'm going to go ahead and move this over to Workspace 2 so I have full screen. Yeah, this is taking a little too long. Maybe I should have. Uh, paused. Too late now. All right, and let's clear and let's just make sure LS works fine and it does. Let's um, now. So I'm going to hit uh, type in LSBLK. And you'll notice uh, SDA is showing. That's because I plugged in that Samsung uh, USB drive, which is 128 uh, gig of RAM, so that I can store more uh, data on this machine. Now, again, if I was going to do this for real, I probably would have like a two terabyte drive or something like that. But for this purpose, I'm using um, a USB drive that is, you know, decent sized. Now. I'm going to, um, yeah, I don't know what's on that drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say sudo uh, mkfs uh, just to uh, make sure that it is uh, formatted. And um, dev, s, dev sda, okay. And sure, yes, I am going to, and this will take, um, well, yeah, a small amount of time just for uh, just for the size of the uh, of the drive, and there you go. So I want to go ahead and label it too. So it's sudo and e2 label and dev sda. Now this isn't for all um, uh, file formats, but for X ext4 this will definitely work. And then I'm going to say the name of the or the, the label of the drive, and I'm just going to call it USB. Okay. Now um, I want to use the sudo. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to type the command sudo 
uh, block ID. Okay, and you're going to see that the UUID for the um, for that USB drive is this, and we're going to copy that. And now we're going to go sudo. Um, I'm going to use nano this time, and say Etsy FS tab. And so I'm going to go all the way down to the very bottom, and I'm going to uh, Control Shift V. And so what I want to do also is put in the mount point, which is going to be slash um, home username and then USB. Okay. And now I'm going to um, put in the uh, file format, which is ext4. And we're going to use defaults and then tab over and we're going to use a zero and then tab and zero and that should be good so every time we reboot that usb drive will be mounted to the uh, user usb directory so i'm going to hit control o enter and control x all right so let, let's go ahead and reboot just to make sure that that's what happens now it's going to take a minute or two to uh to come back online So I'll pause for a sec. Nah, that's all right. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go SSH and then Drew at and then the machine name again. And, it's gonna, it, it, and once it gets it a chance to connect, we should get a, uh, a prompt for to authenticate. Okay. Oh, there it goes. All right, and now there we go. And there is our machine. And so now when I say um, ls, you're going to see that USB drive right there. So let's go actually into the USB. There should be a lost and found, and there you go. So now we can actually just use that USB drive for our uh, image directory and uh, let's get started with that now let's clear the screen all right let's go ahead and um, create a snapshot and I'm gonna do that just on root I think so but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sudo make dir uh, dash p and then say um, dot snapshots and um, we're going to call it root and we're going to call one home and that should be good for now okay so let's um, sudo butterfs um, sub volume list and then slash okay and you can see the uh, uh, top level fives so let's clear the screen and we're going to uh, create a uh, snapshot. So we're going to say sudo butterfs sub, sub volume and then snapshot. And then we're going to say of root and we're going to put it at uh, dot snapshot and um, root. And we're going to call it um, server minimal hyphen minimal okay and there you go so now after um, creating the snapshot let's go ahead and list again butterfs uh, sub list and then slash and there you go there's that um, snapshot in the uh, in root all right I did notice something real quick let me back up and say ls and so yeah that root for usb needs to change so let's uh, say sudo chown um, dash r uh, drew colon drew oh, drew for uh, usb and now let's ls and there you go and so let's make sure we are and there you go okay sounds good Okay, after clearing the screen, let us open up a browser.
And I'm going to do a simple ins uh, search for uh, Debian Docker. It's not here. There's one right here. So you'll see this uh, deb package. Now, um, I am not going to install this, but if you are using um, a version of Debian with a desktop environment or window manager or something like that, something that's graphical, I would say do this. Use this. Okay. Um, again, I don't have a lot of experience in this, but um, installing, I'm going to go down here and click on this Docker's uh, package repository. Okay. And in this, you'll see installation methods. Docker engine comes bundled with this is the easiest way to get started. And maybe I should be doing it this way, but I'm just going to set it up um, in command line. So let's go ahead and uh, use these commands. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy those and paste. And let's go ahead and click that. And yes, we're going to uh, allow the installation. Okay, and I'm going to clear the screen. Oh, clear the screen again. And we're going to go down to this next one. Add the official GPG key. And I'm going to copy that and paste. And click on that. And we're good. And now we're going to do one more right here. Copy this and paste. That's good. And uh, we are not going to be using this, so I think that's fine. And then we're going to uh, sudo apt update. And you can see that it, it loaded the, um, the Docker repo. And I'm going to go ahead and cl click copy here. And we're going to and we're going to paste it in. Let's click, uh, let's control C for a second. And let me just go ahead and right click and paste. And then we should be good. And let's go ahead and say yes. And let's go ahead and just copy this just to see if it, it installed correctly. And there you go. It says hello from Docker. All right, let's go ahead and open up uh, the image installation requirements. Introduction should be good here. Um, install. Now you could try to run this. I'm going to go keep down and go down here to the Docker Compose recommended. Okay. And I'm going to uh, copy this. And since I'm in that USB directory where I want to be, I'm going to just say paste. And there you go. Now, um, we are going to go ahead and get this Docker Compose uh, YAML file and say that. And click in there. And we're going to get the ENV. And we're probably going to have to edit this. So let me paste this. And ls. Okay, there's that dot env. Now let's uh, let's micro into env. Okay. Now in this upload location here, I think what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, home uh, drew uh, the username and then USB and that image uh, hyphen app directory yeah oh uh, yeah app and that should do so let's close that and now we're going to copy this and we're since we're in the same um, directory as the uh, YAML and the ENV I'm just going to paste that in and Dr. Compose not found. Oh, well, maybe I need sudo, huh? Here, let's try that again. And let me 
gonna go to the home and say sudo and try that. And nope. And is there hmm. Well I could have sworn sudo apt install docker uh, compose. Oh, could have sworn it was already installed. My bad. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, man. It's taking it from the wrong spot. Hmm. Well, let's give it a shot. Maybe it's taking it from... Maybe it won't matter. All right, let's try this one more time. Okay, there you go. Cool. So now what? It's taking a little bit longer than I thought. I did, but I've only—I think I've done this only a couple times where I really wasn't paying attention to the, the time it was taking. But so far, so good, right? Okay. Now. I'm going to go back over to um, the post install steps. Maybe that's what I need. So it says go to this. And since this, you know, since we don't, I don't know what the uh, actual IP is. I'm just going to say HTTP uh, colon slash slash in the name of my server. And then what was it was a. Uh, 283. Oh, no, I'm sorry. What was it again? 2283. 2283. And there you go. Image is installed. All right, let's get going. Um, I am going to go ahead and fill this out offline. Um, and then I'll catch up with you in a sec. Okay, we are logged in. Uh, that was really simple. So I'm going to go and look at the administration. You'll see that I use Jag at Just a Guy Linux. And as far as being able to upload, I am going to settings. I'm just looking at a little bit of everything real quick. Because again, this is new for me. So, and let's go to the home page and say upload and let's go to um, let's go to my backgrounds and take a few of these uh, and say open huh well that was weird Let's try that again. Okay, well, maybe is it do only do one at a time? All right, let's try that again. And say okay. Oh, there you go. All right, yeah, it did it. All right, what, what it doesn't do is it doesn't auto refresh. Because so I, I think what's going to happen is if I could go to. Let's see. Oh, there we go. If I just hit refresh, then it shows that. Now, I guess the question is, um, this is pretty cool, by the way. 
the question is ls so the library thumbs and uploads let's see so if i go into cd into library admin cd into just want to make sure that it putting it in the right spot and so it's, it's it shows the um, it shows the files uh, without having any type of uh, compression, which is good. So let's go and uh, and let's go look at thumbs. Should be fine, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is great. Um, this is what exactly what I was looking for. So let me go ahead and looks like everything is squared away. Okay. Now what I'm going to do probably is stop the video. Now I mean we have a working uh, we have a working image um, app. And what we need to do, I think, is what I'd like to do at least, is to figure out a way to use it um, online. So uh, I'm going to pause and we're going to try to figure that one out for next time. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching and uh, for your comments and for subscribing. Appreciate it. Bye.